Hi, everyone. Uh, Larry Gordon here at the offices of the uh, Five Towns Jewish Times. And uh, this is the continuation of our father-daughter uh, podcast, which has been critically acclaimed. But uh, we haven't... Uh, we we try to come to you uh, as often as possible. I don't want to say. I don't want to say we. Go, I don't know. We've just been very busy, uh, very distracted, and uh, we haven't gotten around to doing it. But um, the people are demanding that uh, it be more, more consistent. So um, we You're have to. You're talking about meaningful people. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, that's different people. Is Amari here? <laughs> different strokes. Different strokes for different folks. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I mean, listen, this is uh, something that we have to uh, try our best to fit into uh, as often as possible. I'm not going to say every week. That's very ambitious. But not impossible. It's not impossible to do. I used to say about the newspaper, you know, that I, I could produce. I once had a conversation with somebody about doing the paper twice a week. Twice a week? Yeah. Remember when you did it um, every, it wasn't every week no, in the it, beginning? No, it was, uh, first it started out every two, every, every two three weeks. weeks. No, it started out every two weeks. And then it went three. Then it went three times a month, mm -hmm. and then it went to every every um, every week. But imagine uh, what it takes for a paper to come out every single day. Well, listen, come on, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, you know, uh, what they put out, it's massive, it's you crazy. know. Crazy. Uh, but you know, in our little way here, with our small staff and uh, our outside vendors, I thought a while ago. I haven't thought about it because uh, it, it may not be, uh, you know, um, profitable enough, you know to uh, go ahead and you got to work on Sunday if you're going to come out with a paper on Tuesday but you know the people are trained to look for a paper on Thursday they're, they're conditioned I don't want to say trained they're conditioned to uh, to uh, find the paper on Thursday you talk and about the Jewish community yeah, at large yeah community. yeah they, well that's who our that's who our market our is the, the Jewish yeah, community sure. uh, anyway uh, this is uh, this is father daughter um, that's Malky Hirsch and I'm her father and um, uh, this is uh, an unscripted and unprepared, completely unprepared and unscripted. We have As a matter no of fact, what we're talking about right now. you know, yesterday I wanted to text you a couple of times. Maybe we should talk about X, and I said, no, 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 that would be dishonest cheating. to do that. That'd that be cheating. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. I want to go into this thing not knowing exactly what we're going to be talking about. Okay. So, but but I do want to now that we're sitting here and the the video camera is on and the microphones are on, yeah. and uh, and Yochanan standing in the wings and Ema sitting across from us watching us. Um, I, I just uh, I I was thinking you know I wrote last week about the uh, wrote an interesting what I thought was an interesting article about the guy that became the rabbi in Dubai, Rabbi Eli Abadi. Right. And uh, one of the comments he made to me, which I quoted him in the paper, was that um, he said um, he said that he thinks that someday uh, Jews may want to leave Europe with his anti-Semitism, like but Paris, right. Paris, Italy, um, I don't know, London, England. Where there's a lot of you know a lot of anti-Semitism, and he does he sees it as, as a possibility that okay, it'd be nice if they went to Israel came to America maybe, he sees that someday they may want to go to Dubai or to Bahrain, especially people who originally came from Muslim countries like uh, Algeria or Tunisia. They be, may be more comfortable in that kind of, uh, of an environment. So he doesn't say it's impossible that someday, in a, in a year or two years, once the, once the Jewish community gets established in these places and there's more kosher food available and there's mikvahs and he wants to uh, uh, create a, a, a bet din in, in Dubai, uh, that they'll be more comfortable uh, living in a place like that. Anyway, uh, the article was posted on the website, and the guy writes to me, that idea that you wrote, that you recorded in the paper, is completely bonkers, the guy writes <laughs> to me. And I said to myself, well, it wasn't my idea. I was talking to a guy. The guy said it, so I wrote it in the paper. I thought it was an interesting observation the guy made. I'm sure that happens all the time because well, it, you publish a newspaper. Well, People course, think that the opinions it are... Happened, it happened with a little bit more intensity, uh, what, five weeks ago, six weeks ago, when, when the U.S. Capitol, January 6th, right? So then January 6th was seven, seven weeks ago, right? January 6th? Not March yet. What? Maybe in March yet. We're not in March yet, so it was like six or, six or seven weeks ago. It was the end yeah, of February, six weeks. Yeah. six weeks ago. And, you know, when we had that infamous photo uh, on the front page the of the paper. And, you know, uh, I got pinned with uh, condoning and advocating violence. You know, I mean, is that crazy or is that crazy? For people that know you, yeah, it's actually really crazy. Yeah, I'm not a violent person. Yeah. I'm a peaceful person. But, I, they, but, but certain powers that be... In, not just in the in the community where we where we live and work, but 
in the world at large. Absolutely. We had a meeting yesterday with somebody in Israel who said to us, they were all talking about in Israel. What, what's going on in that newspaper so, in New York? Uh, my question for you is this, because you've always been the type of person that said to me, any publicity is good publicity. Well, listen. The fact that people were talking as much as they were, even though you might have been stressed out with, you know, the backstory and why this came about, was there a part of you that was like, I like this. Well, you know what? The truth of the matter <laughs> For is... For weeks, I couldn't get a newspaper. Yeah. Everywhere I went, yeah. there weren't any available. And it, every time I went to Citibank for, on my Friday you know, afternoon to get uh, money for my housekeeper, I would turn to where the paper papers was available, are in, in nothing Bank, there, and there was something there. in me that was like, I know this is the reason. That's the reason. So, people people were, were, were grabbing, grabbing it up. The same thing, happened, same thing happened where we distributed in South Florida. All of a sudden, the person that distributes say, the papers are going like crazy. You've got to send more papers down. Because you know, we need a new scandal. <laughs> but that's that, 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 not why you put it in. That, 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 no, that, 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 I guess I got bogged down in that. I put it in because I was covering the news. We're a newspaper. Exactly. Newspaper. <laughs> newspaper covers the news. And that was the news story of that, of that week. You don't have to necessarily have a position or condone or advocate or call for whatever Not you want to call it. Not everybody has to agree with the stuff that you put in the paper. Well, you know, but whatever, whatever, whatever happens in the paper, uh, people feel that uh, they can pin on me. Like very often, I get semi-controversial articles from people, and they say, or a letter from someone, they say, and, and, and they address something, they criticize something, and they say to me, uh, uh, "Don't use my name." I say, I'm sorry. If you can't use your name, then I'm not using the letter. Right. Because if you, if 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 a letter on a controversial item is is signed anonymous, then the people think that I wrote it, right. and I'm just planting it in the paper. Because as crazy as it sounds, I could put anything I want in there. This is true. You know. <laughs> so the the so the U.S. Capitol thing, you know, what was it? Was it a protest? Was it a riot? Was it a demonstration? Was it an insurrection? I don't know. It was a, a it was a it was a news story. Regardless of what it was, it was news. And also, but the question about uh, was it good publicity for the papers in the aftermath? Uh, I would say absolutely, absolutely. There you, you go. Know? Uh, they say there's only one thing worse than people talking bad about you, and that's when you don't talk about you at all. Exactly. So, uh, uh, that, that, but it wasn't planned. Listen, it wasn't in, a, planned. in a lot of ways, I feel the same about myself. Okay, how so? Because I think that when, when, when Maishi died, everybody was curious to see what was going to go down in my life. Including my, you. Including you. Including me, but for me, and being us. within myself. I had a different position because I was not really, I was just in a state of shock. It took me a while. People were looking towards me. They were like, what's going to happen? What's she going to say? What's she not going to say? You know, so it's the same kind of thing with the newspaper. People are just like, they're just riveted to see what's going to happen. Well, listen, so, like I said, it's, people are creatures of habit. Um, it is the nature of that business. And your situation is, I guess, more real life. Course. than a newspaper you can manipulate anything you, you want in a life. newspaper yeah. absolutely you're you right. know so Definitely. you know so you know but but still i think one of the things that we that has evolved is that that we have in common is that we're both tasked and uh, challenged to come up with fresh ideas every yeah, week definitely uh, for me i think it's easier for me than for you because you're dealing in a more narrow area uh, at least so far i well, mean you I've could been trying you could, to branch you could, out you could, a you could bit. Than i could write about anything <laughs> If, I'm, no, if I can write about UFOs. Do you ever see, I mean, I don't know, you're not a People Magazine subscriber, are no, you? No. Are you? No, I'm not. Emo? She is. Okay. <laughs> so for me, what I love is when there's literally, there are countries where people are, there are civil wars happening all over the world. And there's a picture of some celebrity that's going through a breakup. And I'm like, this is it? This is all you got? This is all you have? And I think to myself, is it not as interesting for people to watch what's happening in Africa or wherever else? You you have you have the royal family on the cover again for well, the fifth week. You know, Why you know? So I wonder. People want they want something like a fairy tale. The media no media media has to pander to the lowest common denominator. Right. The thing that the broadest number of people are going to uh, find appealing. Right. And the royal family has been promoted. What makes them royal family? You know, they're just uh, people. Uh, just people that happen to live in a big house in in, in England. <laughs> exactly. You know, a huge house in England. You know, like some of the people in the in the five towns. Is that what you're exactly. trying to say? Exactly. <laughs> now you Same. Got it. All right. So you know. So anyway, we started to talk about um, 
and and in Brooklyn, and in Brooklyn, and Lakewood, the banks have exactly. fine houses that in Lakewood, too. That too. and in California too, in Florida, you see what they're building. It's unbelievable, you know. Amazing. So amazing, there's some. Amazing. I don't mean to pick on on the five towns. It's not just well, you're not a, just you're, you're a five towner, so that well, makes sense. Well, the name of the papers, the five towns of Jewish Times. So 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 that's that's an interesting question. So how question. do you how, how do you, do you broaden, determine how do you, what's newsworthy and how do you you know? Well, for me, it's easy. For me, it's easy to do. I'm right. dealing. I'm dealing with the news. You're dealing with uh, really uh, human emotions. But like, so lately, because for a long time, I would say for maybe a year and a half, I was just writing, really about just the life, life as a widow. Uh, life the as a widow. Part of you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be like that every week. And I've been trying to sort of like branch out and like make it more about you know our but, life after. Yeah, but you're you're breaking new ground. Uh, you know, In what way? Um, you're you're well. You're not. Uh, you're not. Uh, you didn't collapse. Uh, on the contrary, right. you uh, you know what happened happened, but you um, you use it as a uh, as a catalyst and as an inspiration and as a motivation to to live. Right. And not just for yourself, obviously, but no. uh, for the kids. Right. For sure. And the kids, uh, you know, it's all, it's two years, and it's the crazy. kids, two the kids, years. the kids are growing up. You know, Dublin was 11. Now he's a young man. It's crazy. You know, the oldest. Uh, he's, now he's a young man. He's 13 uh, and a half, yeah. right? Yeah. He, he's going to be 14 soon. You know, yeah. he's, a, he's a teenager. He's a young man. And uh, so, you know, this is... Uh, it's a great... But you used to always tell people when they would ask you, and I think this is a great response, they would ask you, how are the kids? How, how are the kids? kids? And you would say to them, I'll let you know in 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. It, but uh, the truth is, the truth is, like, as time goes on, and I see how they are evolving and how they are maturing into the people that they're going to be, um, I realize... But there, are such, there are such different stages of even young life, all of them, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, David is a young man, okay? But uh, this is also on the borderline of being a young man. Yeah. But, you know, Yosef is just coming into his own <laughs> right. in terms of his intellectual maturity. Definitely. And Gavriel is like, you know, he's a, a caterpillar turning into a <laughs> butterfly. You know, he, he's metamorphosizing, you know. Yeah. And, and, and Rosie was an infant, yeah. practically. Yeah. And now she's an like articulate young lady, I, I know. know. So, so th th you have like, it's like having an, a, a, a large jet with, uh, with five big, bigger than you. You saw that, that, that engine that fell out of the sky? No. Uh, of United Airlines over the weekend, fell off a plane, no. landed in someone's front yard, uh -huh. and it was gigantic. <laughs> it was the size of the person's entire lawn, and it was just a little piece of a plane. So you didn't see that, huh? No, I didn't. All right, you'll see it. So you'll see it on YouTube <laughs> one of these days. Uh, so, so the question is, um, how do you decide what to what what to what to write about in, in any given week? Oh my God! Within within the confines. Well, I wrote that. I wrote about this a couple months ago um, because. Once in a while, I actually I'm required to think like, what am I going to write about? Oh, you, do you actually do you panic? <laughs> no, I don't panic. You know, a few months ago, I was making a dessert for somebody. I was making a cake for somebody, and you guys were by me for Shabbos, and and Ema said to me, she's like, <coughs> how do you not freak out from the stress of having to like deliver something that looks a certain way? Yeah, and it's cake. the same kind of thing with the, the writing. Cake, I yeah. don't, for some reason, I'm a very for with certain things, I'm very, very high strung and very nervous. But with other things, I'm just like, I need to remain super relaxed, and I know that it's just gonna happen. It's just gonna happen. I'm sure you're the same way with writing, you know. Well, you know, I could tell you that I, I, uh, I have, a, I have a certain um, uh, schedule in my head. I have to, have to have an idea about what I, what I want to do yeah. by Saturday night. And, I start writing on Saturday night. And something more, I have to have an idea of what I'm going to do on Saturday night. If I have no ideas, then I start worrying about it on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many articles do you write in the paper? Two. Just two? That's two it? a week. Two Sometimes a week. Three. Two a week over 21 years. How much is that? Like a thousand? A thousand? A little bit over a thousand? But um, I know I, when I was, a, when I was a, a young man, uh, even before I was married a long time ago, I used to have this recurring dream that I was typing on a typewriter okay. and the words were going straight onto the front page of the New York Times. Oh, my God. You know, and I had this dream. Did you love writing then also? Uh, yeah, of I always did. I, I had this dream. I had this constant dream 
I had this constant dream that I was typing on a typewriter. This was before there were word processors so or wow. before computers. Yeah. And I was typing, and the words were going onto the front page of the New York Times. It's just, uh, you know, I have a couple of these crazy recurring dreams, but one that's related to journalism is, uh, is that one. But uh, that's pretty much the schedule, you know. Um, I, um, right. So I had the same kind of thing, but um, a few weeks ago, uh, it was a couple of months ago, Ema said to me, um, I, I, I'm not sure if you asked me or I just I started writing about like what how I even come to like writing. write certain things over others most of the time what happens in my life because my life is extremely unstressful no <laughs> my life is busy there's a lot well, going yeah, on every every, every, every day so for me there's always a lot of material right. I, I don't you know I'm not wanting for any kind of like real action well um, I used to always think that, uh, you know, on the subject of writing, people, I, I, I always thought that anyone that knows how to think knows how to write. Yeah. Because I used to say that, um, let's say I write, I write two articles of uh, 1,200 words each, just 2,400. Right. How much is 1,200 words? I don't even know how many uh, party words page? I, how many, I write. Well, you could look on your computer screen and it'll tell you Do the you know numbers. Do you know how I write? On your phone. Mm -hmm. On my notes. Well, well, oh, you know, know what? If you did, did people are horrified when I say it. They're like, "How do you write?" And I'm like, no, I'm, "I'm a phone." So one second, I'm a phone. so there's a writer that knows how to think writes, right? Uh, so I know anyone that knows how to think know, should know so should know how to write. So started thinking when, when we were in our just. <laughs> Late 30s. Well, late no, 30s. The, the, the point is that late bloomers. a person, I, a, a person, I think that a person, right. um, a person thinks about a thousand words uh, an hour, and there's 168 hours in a week. So that means you have about 168,000 words going through your head in the course of a week. You only have to give about two or three thousand on paper. Mm -hmm. That's like a fraction of, of the thing. So, but people say they don't know how to write. You know, I think to myself when people say to me, oh, yeah. I can't write, I say to myself, maybe you can't think. <laughs> maybe you don't know how to think if you don't. But, but apparently there is some kind of connection between, uh, it doesn't mean that if you, if you don't know how to write that you can't think. It doesn't mean that. I mean, it's you just, just can't, two you different can't things. You can't articulate yourself in words on paper. Listen, I, guess. Uh, I don't know. It, it's, hard to, it, it's, it's hard to understand, but I, I understand that there's, there's two parallel things going on. Right, right. So as far as um, the material goes, I just take something that happens during my week, and there is so much. But sometimes, and this is really weird to even say this like out loud like on a podcast, but sometimes on Shabbos, which is when I get most of my ideas, literally something is dropped in my head in a moment of just like quiet, when the kids are outside playing or whatever, and that's where I, that's where I, like, I start like, it like starts snowballing like into like actual writing. And then I try holding on to it until I'm at the shop. That's, and then yeah, I'll start. That's, yeah. That, that's a problem sometimes when, yeah. when, you, when, you're when you're thinking you try, about. When you, it's on Saturday night, you say, My God, I had such a good idea this morning, and I, I, don't, you're remember, thinking of the words. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> what it was, what it was. But I find that if you attach like a mnemonic. Mnemonic devices. To, to it, like a, a, yeah. a word. Yeah. And, you, and you remember what that word is, <laughs> that'll get the whole ball rolling. So, and the idea will unfold. Right. What I find also is a huge inspiration for me is when I'm reading a book. Um, I find a lot of inspiration in, in any, you know, um, this week the article I wrote is, um, what's it called again, the chip glass? Uh, the cup is half chipped. Half chipped glass right. or whatever. Um, it's based on a poem um, from Matt Haig, he's a, he's a guy that um, posts his stuff on Instagram. And um, it's, about, it's about how he seeks out the chip glass um, in people. Um, how he seeks, yeah, he seeks out the people that um, have a story and they live their lives imperfectly and proudly, regardless of how messy it looks to others, because that essentially is life. People don't, people don't live perfect lives, and if you're anywhere in the realm of perfection, then that's godly, and you would not be here because there's no journey for you. Well, so. <laughs> the nature of the world is imperfection. That's how the, God, the design of the world was to be imperfect. Absolutely. And I, in, in that vein, I, I, I'm reading, uh, I only read once a week on Shabbos, Shabbos you yeah. know, otherwise Same. you're stuck with electronic stuff. <laughs> but um, I'm reading Natan Sharansky's book, it's called Never Alone. And he has some uh, very extraordinary observations, and I even mentioned it to Ima last Shabbos that I, I just he had a line in there. 
He was told, he said, he said uh, happy families are all the same. Unhappy families are all unhappy for different reasons. So you see, if you have a happy, smooth going, you know, conventional family, every family is the same. Everything is good, everything is great, blah, blah, blah. If you're unhappy, everybody that's unhappy or struggling or challenging or this or that, it is a combination of different reasons why, yeah. they're, why they're unhappy. So I thought that was a, a great, uh, great observation uh, on, on his part. Right. So what would you, if you, if you want to branch out, to a different area, now you have a captive audience. I don't necessarily you know, think that whatever this you're, week about. You're, you're, you're on the front page every week. You, by the way, you can move it if you want. Uh, you know, I'm just letting you know. Don't I? I, I, I know that like that real estate is like pressure. I don't want it. Is, it is very valuable, very, but I, yeah. I think uh, I think it's uh, I think it, it belongs there. I think people uh, I'm just, are I'm accustomed. Putting it out there. Oh, you, I hear what you're saying. And now okay. I, I will. I will take. Uh, I'll, I'll take that under advisement. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, in the future, maybe, maybe I'll put it someplace else so people will be looking for it <laughs> at this stage of the game. By the way, I put Malky Hirsch on page 79. People are going go one, two. <laughs> newspaper which is what you want it's you know? almost like almost like Gila Jedwan <laughs> you know they're still looking where's Gila no she's a good she's a nice she's a great person she's, she's awesome. a great dentist she's our dentist she and uh, we love her we like her very much uh, but she has crazy ideas you know so it, uh, I told her that <laughs> what'd she say she thinks I'm crazy for saying she has crazy ideas <laughs> there you go you know she thinks what she thinks okay <laughs> anyway but, um so I've actually been thinking about that one week because I, I have been writing for way longer than I thought I would. So um, I always think about that week where I'm going to just like, Abba's going to, you know, he's going to message me and be like, where's your article? And I'll be like, I got nothing. Yeah, I got nothing. Is, that, is it possible that could happen? I think anything's possible. Um, I didn't expect to be writing every week. That was never my plan, you know. Okay, but now, now there's a momentum. You know, now it's like a, it's like an exercise. It's like working out. It's like you go on the Peloton or you take a gym class, and it's like um, Elizabeth Gilbert, who is a um, famous author. She, I, I've, I've quoted her here on the podcast before. She wrote Eat, Pray, Love, among a lot of other books. She talks about how, you know, you think that if you're a writer that it's a natural gift and, like, it's effortless for you to just put pen to paper and just, like, write whatever you feel. Writing is an exercise, like exercise is an exercise. Like when you cook more, you become better at it. You feel it better. The food, you just know more about the practice. It's the same thing with writing. The more you write, the better you're going to be. So, but let me, so let me reverse what I said before about yeah. if you know how to think, you know how to write. But if you, I think it's also, the, it, it flows more um, with more uh, rhythm the other way around. If you know how to write, then you know how to think. Possibly. Can you can you write without thinking? It's not possible. Of course not. Uh, yeah, a writer has to be a. Nobody's going to read it. <laughs> In the beginning, when people would approach me, I thought to myself, "That's so nice that they're so nice to me." And then I was like, "Maybe, maybe they're there's something not, maybe going they're not on." Maybe they're not being nice. Maybe well, you they're, see, they like this. You if know? you stop, if you stop, you know, you'd be disappointing a lot of people. I mean, how many people do you how many people do you hear from in the course of a, a good week? I hear I hear from I get letters uh, every day, but if, if I do something wrong, then <laughs> it's nonstop. It's nonstop. People are just like waiting Matthew around. Last week showed me on the website that I had two thousand hits. Right, that's, that's right. Not two thousand uh, um, eyes, sort 2, of thing. Well, that's because you have it on Instagram where you have Kiss the Kosher Cook and you is have, that, what, 23,000? That makes sense. You're well, right. Well, you, you have it on 000. there, and when yeah. people want to read it, right. it, goes, it leads them to the, to the website. This is true. Right, right. So if you, had to, if you wanted to go into another area that you wanted to tackle, uh, you know, other than raising a family of five kids another alone. Another subject matter entirely? Yeah. Yeah, where would you go? Where, where, where would you go? Fashion? Uh, uh, I probably would walk right food, about my blogging. Yeah. Food, food. Yeah, about my yeah, about what I do, the things that I do, the things that bring me joy. You know, it's all going to be the same kind of lifestyle um, genre. You know, but it's it's what I know. It's, it's not going to be not going to be world affairs or international politics. Do you think politics. I know world affairs? Remember when I you asked know. me a question during a podcast about how I felt about Trump, and I was like, Trump? Is he the one that's Trump? running for president? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, who's Trump? Do we know who Trump is? Rabbi Trump? Who are you talking about? Mr. Trump? That's I, a beautiful I thing. Don't That's I don't a beautiful know. thing. We, listen, I know, we know people. We know people that uh, also don't have the idea what's going on in the news and 
we we meet them all the time and 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 i asked the guy once i said to him how is it that you don't know what's going on in the world he says hashem's gonna do what he wants anyway what do yes. i have to, what do i have to know what's going what do i have to know what's going on in the world that's a beautiful the, way to live the nuance uh, yeah i know i was thinking about this is pretty stupid but <laughs> <laughs> then, 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 then after what happened with this, this election and, and what's yes. going on now and the, the lying and the, 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 the deception in the, in the government and what's going on with, with the New York State, with Governor Cuomo and the yes. nursing homes, yes. you know, you think to yourself sometimes, you know, why can't I just remove myself, remove myself from this? And you know what? I'm watching a lot less news and reading a lot less news than right. I used to because I know it's... it's, it's well, because uh, mainstream media is not actually true. It may not be, you know. There, you know, but it, it, there is. But they were accusing, you know. One thing the Republicans say about the Democrats, that's actually has been proved out, is everything the Democrats accuse the Republicans of is what they're doing, you know. So if you accuse the next person as doing something and you're actually doing it, that's like a good uh, uh, way of obscuring the fact that you're actually guilty of doing something bad or, uh, right. or wrong, as long as you accuse the. Uh, the next person. So you're not writing about international politics or cars, for example. Uh, no, I know nothing about. It. I can I can tell you about the beauty of a Honda Odyssey. That's about it. Otherwise, I'm, yeah. I'm I mean, I think you wrote last week about the uh, the bathtub needing a new body in your uh, in your house, and you didn't say <laughs> you didn't. But I didn't know that. I know when I read that, I didn't know the body. I, I didn't know the bathtub had a body Shower either. Body. Who knew? Who knew? You know? know, I could be a general contractor now, pretty much. Yeah. I can do that. You can do a general contract. You can run a restaurant. I, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you can have your own practice. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what's gonna. But people reach out. People, gonna, but people reach out to you for direction and, and all advice. The time, all the time. And there's. Which uh, is where, which is why I feel like maybe the things that I'm doing like isn't. I have this idea. I have this like general notion that like the stuff that I write, the things that I say on Instagram, like nobody even watches it or reads it. Yeah. Which is why I have no problem. I have zero qualms about. I don't. I don't get nervous because I'm like, who's gonna watch this anyway? And then people are like, oh, I, I saw your podcast. I'm like, you watched it? Why? You know. <laughs> so. Well, listen. You know. The truth of the matter is, you know, um, we're gonna we're gonna end in a few minutes. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is that um, in Jewish life, it's different than general media. Yeah. I think I told you this. Uh, I always tell the boys uh, 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 that you know, in Jewish life, if you um, if we print twenty five thousand copies of the Five Towns Jewish Times, and it's all over the New York, New Jersey uh, area, and it's in, in South Florida, and, uh, and and sometimes a guy will call me and say, uh, "How many papers do you print?" And I tell him what the price is for an ad, and, and I and he says, "You know, I could get the same price in the Daily News." Uh, for that, for that, uh, I said, "Yeah, but you don't have the people reading Daily News that can afford your stuff." You right. know, exactly. if I, you know, if I print twenty-five thousand papers, if I could, if I can get, if I could just print five hundred papers and guarantee that it gets into the hands of people with the kind of buying power that you're looking for, it'll be worth it to you spending right. whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Right. And it's the same thing if you have twenty-three thousand followers. Right. It's not how many; it's who are they? Who are they? You know, in Jewish life. Uh, uh, and it could be other, in other lifestyles too, but in Jewish life, when you have 25,000 uh, papers which could be read by, I don't know, four or five people read each paper, I don't know, so let's say it's 100, 150,000 people, another 10,000 a week read it online, uh, you, you're, you're reaching people that are decision makers, that yes. are business owners, Absolutely. that are members of boards, that are heads of organizations, yeah. uh, that are partners in law firms. That's who you're reaching. You're not, you're not reaching you know, uh, people that are... That's why not, businesses are willing to pay that's influencers right. so, to advertise for them. So anytime a guy says to me, and this is relevant to Instagram too, I believe, anytime someone says to me, how many readers do you have? I said, no, you're asking the wrong question. It's not how many, it's who. Who are they? Who's reading? You want to know who's reading because right. that's worth everything in the world. So anyway, that's the, that's the conclusion of this uh, free-flowing conversation. Good stuff. It's good to get back on track. Yeah. It's good to get back on track and we're going to uh, try to be as unprepared next week as we were this week <laughs> although I have some ideas I'm trying to push out of my head so that uh, we come in here on an even uh, playing field and uh, your article's on the front page so far uh, so go, far going forward as long as you're behaving thank you okay thank you. and uh, I want to thank you very much for uh, tuning in to uh, Father Daughter I'm Larry Gordon this is Marky Hirsch have a good day everyone